Uh, it's pretty uh, pretty stock gobbles. I don't think he, he changed too much. He has a yeah pile driver lackey matron ringleader. Uh, and Worth started off with that lackey, so that's always that's what you want to see as a goblin star. That is what you want to see. On the other hand, we've got Kenny Mayer. He showed me his deck earlier. He's playing just like black, white, uh, green junk kind of. Neither Real Queries, Dark Confidants, uh, Sensei's Divining Top, Thoughtseize, Swords of Plowshares, Kim to Turok. Uh, for those of you just joining us, this is round eight of the Star City Games Open Series here in Edison, New Jersey. I'm Gavin Verhey, joined by Jared Silva. Uh, event manager for Star City Games. Yep. And uh, we're watching the feature match between Max Teets on the right hand corner and Kenny Mayer on the, on the left hand side. Uh, Max led it with a yeah, Goblin Lackey, which is exactly what he wants. It's just such a ridiculous card. But Kenny has the swords, fortunately, to foil that plan. Yep, that was about to get real bad if he wasn't able to answer it. Uh, have you seen a lot of goblins running around? I know you have, haven't, maybe haven't had a ton of time to look uh, since, through the tables, but since survival has been banned, goblins has definitely been one of the major, major players. Uh, it was being held back by the survival decks, and it didn't have a great, uh, didn't have a great matchup there. Really, was trying to find uh, where it fit in, what its sideboard should be, what types of, uh, uh, of, of plans it should be using. It stayed with Warren Weirding because you do still have a lot of decks that do throw that one big threat out um, but that originally started off as tech against reanimator which took a huge dive after mystical tutor went away so but it's definitely been around you've got a couple of versions of it most of them now are running with the Warren Weirding in the in the main deck so they have some black in there that also gives them access to stuff like thought sees in the sideboard um, but you also sometimes just see all of that move to the board, which lets um, which lets them have a little more space to just go after their opponent in their main deck. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, and then on Kenny's side, like this black, white, green drunk deck isn't something we've seen a ton of. Uh, we've seen kind of a Mangara of Coronor version. Uh, uh, Lewis Lassen called it Death and Taxes, I believe. Yep. The when you have Mangara of Coronor and uh, Aether Vial and a way to bounce it, you can send it in and out and just get rid of a whole bunch of stuff. Right. That's that's the death and taxes combo. That gets dropped into a couple of these green-white black decks. Right, and so like, uh, Kenny has the Caracas still, uh, Caracas still yep. good at bouncing Emrakul and Iona, but he does not have the Mangara of Coronor combo uh, in the deck. So he's opted for like a more traditional build with Parmogoyf, Knights of, Knights of the Relic Quarries, and Dark Confidants as his only creatures. And as you saw, he just used Hymn of the Turak, the iconic card, of the archetype to strip two cards from Max's hand, really, really hurting his chances. Yep, you hear a whole bunch, uh, almost every format has its green, white, black deck. You just take the best <laughs> pieces that are out there and you kind of shove them together and say, you know what, I I'm just going to have good cards all game long. You've got to answer it. Yeah, and absolutely, and it's interesting how many different ones you can do in Legacy because you have so many different cards. You can build a controlling green, white, black deck, a faster group green white black deck and we saw Gerard Fabiano earlier earlier in the tournament he's playing for a top eight this round I believe with a uh, different take on the uh, deck with Team America approach the same deck that won last week uh, so there's all kinds of different green white black decks running around and they all run some of the same cards some of the different ones and it's interesting to see how they uh, match up against the different uh, decks out in the field in different ways uh, yep. we're joined also by Ben Hayes who just uh, entered the booth. Right, welcome back welcome back hey, how's it going it took me until now to realize I I thought I was when I left the hotel, and then I looked down at some point today, and I was like, well, anyway, I'm, that's I'm, how I am. Well, I'm glad we solved that egregious error. Yeah. <laughs> and, Welcome uh, to the team. Well, <laughs> again, it's good to be back. So, uh, uh, looks uh, like Kenny's in good shape. Yeah, uh, that him to Turok, I, I can't see exactly which two cards he hit, but they were certainly devastating for him. I mean, Max has been able to build back up with Goblin uh, War Chief and a Mog War Marshal, but Kenny's got double Tarmogoyf and Dark Confidant, along with Sensei's Divining Top, which is making sure he's not taking too much damage from his Dark Confidant. Uh, does Max have one or two? How many cards does Max have in hand? Do we know? Looks like two cards in hand for Max. Uh, the War Chief is so powerful because it, well, he may not have any <laughs> cards. I don't know. Looks cards. like he had three, so he's going to hold one after this him to Turok. All right, let's see what we uh, nail here. And he rolls. And uh, we were talking about this a little earlier, but uh, when you do, do a randomization effect, the, the like insect is like just pull two cards out of your opponent's hand for something like him. But there's a big, uh, but you really should roll a dice because a like it makes it truly random. 
uh, you know, your opponent might like have organized cards in their hand in a certain way to trick you, or uh, from their perspective and from your perspective, like you know, you might have a read on what they're doing, and you don't want to like have a bias toward what cards you're picking. Uh, when it, it should be a truly random effect. So rolling dice is always a good way to randomize uh, which cards you're taking with a random ability. Uh, so as I was saying, one of the things with Warchief and why it is so powerful is it just allows you to be so explosive. Uh, cutting down the cost and also turning on haste in a, in a deck where all you want to do is turn guys sideways, just exactly what you want. I can bring down more guys and they're all going to be right out there in the red zone immediately. <laughs> Absolutely, and normally Goblins has a fairly aggressive start, backed by the Warchief, but this game, the double hand to Turok by Kenny has really hamstringed Max's ability to get that quick start. But even now, we see CGA and Commander coming down, which is, uh, along with Goblin Warchief, is certainly nice. Not only did it cost four, but all the Goblins from the CGA and Commander have haste, too. Uh, that makes Max's board three 1-1 one -one Goblin tokens, Four, one or, from the oh, War Marshal. Oh, wow, yeah. Four, from, four, one from, uh, four, three from CG Commander, one from War Marshal. The War Marshal itself, Goblin War Chief, and the CG Commander. Versus Kenny Mayers, Dark Confidant, Tarmogoyf, and uh, Sensei's Divining Top. And Max has some calculations and swings, deciding to leave the CG Commander and Goblin War Chief back at home. Yeah, I don't know what Kenny has in hand, but I don't think Max is in terrible shape here. I mean, Siege Gang can come online and for him every turn. Yeah, and if, you know, if at any can, point Max draws, like, a ringleader or a matron for a ringleader, like, he could easily he could easily get back into this. Yeah, that, uh, that or I mean not not back into this he is in this yep so yeah not not a whole lot of decks that are excited about coming back from <laughs> double him to Torok but Goblins is one of them that just needs to uh, get that little bit and it can explode right back out yeah that CG commander was a great draw for Max and really propelled him to exactly what he needed here um, he went from kind of a mediocre placing, he found the Warchief, which like you said, Jared, was a crucial part of the Goblins deck, and yep. then he found the CG and Commander, which goes great with it, and uh, Kenny is suddenly going from a great position to on the ropes. Next turn, Max alone uh, can hit him for four with the Warchief plus, or with the um, Ring Oh, uh, not so much. There oh, goes no, the there, swords. There goes that. Now the board's a little more stabilized. Max still has... A slight advantage, but that Tarmogoyf makes attacking a lot less profitable. And the second yeah. one, <laughs> second Tarmogoyf, makes him but not Kenny's as happy. Kenny's canopy is, uh, you know, it? taking him down. That's two damage in the last two turns. Yep, he's been forced to top be using then. all of his resources. Yeah, yeah. So every point really counts against goblins, and uh, he flipped his top, so he's gonna take one from Bob unless it blocks something. Yes. Um, uh, now Kenny's, it's amazing how much, much uh, games and legacy can go back and forth in such a quick ratio. Now Kenny seems to be maybe slightly advantaged here, but I mean, he still has that Horizon Canopy, which he's taking damage from. There's a since it's Divining Top on top of his library, which will deal one damage to him off the Dark Confidant. Um, so Max is you know, in the tank trying to figure out, should I attack here? You know, is it, risk, is it okay to lose my War Chief? Or you know, what line of play do I want to take? And of course he has the one card in his hand he just drew. Who knows what that is? Yeah, and the big thing here is, although Kenny stabilized the board, he's still at a low enough life total that against Goblins, he's always under threat, and he is in no position right now to become the aggressive deck and try and go after Max at 22 life. Right. Uh, Wasteland drops Kenny's uh, Savannah. Yep, and he's yeah. down to three lands. So, so he Wastelands that, and is that a, a Scrubland? Kenny has in play? It looks like a scrubland, yep. a swamp, so and a horizon canopy. Horizon canopy is his only source of green. Correct. I mean, unless he... He drew a Mox Diamond earlier, so he could play that. Um, on the, I guess on the off chance he doesn't have another land, then he could be he choked on green. He hasn't been dropping lands. He's missed a couple of land drops in a row. Probably okay. means he's hurting for him at the moment. Yeah, Max may have choked him on green into using only canopy, which, you know, would damage him and even more. And there it goes. Yeah. I guess maybe a knight here. Yeah. Yep. I mean, knight's a great one to draw, but at this point, every life point is so crucial. And as long as that war chief is on the battlefield, it's going to be so easy for Max to just rip a card and suddenly have a 
whole new legion of goblins, you know, one matron, one ringleader, and suddenly the whole hand comes on the battlefield and attacks right past Kenny, and every life point is going to be crucial. Well, another Siege Gang commander was just ended. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, now, Max only has two in his deck. Uh, he's already drawn one, but if he just draws him, any of his matrons, he can go find his he can other go copy. Find it. And then, you know, next turn, he can just untap and deploy it. Uh, trying to see if Kenny has any interesting lands he can search for here. Uh, none that will really help this matchup too much. He could potentially uh, search for Wasteland with his Knight of the Reliquary to cut Max off of four mana. Uh, so he can't. CG and Commander, alright. So Bob goes down to Warren Weirding. Yep, Warren Weirding goes down. The one of, uh, or two of in Max's list actually. Yep. I'm wondering if Max maybe should have weirdinged himself and sacrificed the War Marshal. That would have given him two tokens from the weirding and one from the War Marshal. Would have brought him up to seven brought him up creatures seven on the guys. board. I'm not sure it matters, but like the Bob would have damaged Kenny. So it's the Bob would have dealt Kenny one. It's possible that between the Horizon Canopy and the Bob and the extra token, Max could have been in a better position. It would have dropped Kenny uh, to three, dropped. I believe. If he'd gone in with everything, he would have uh, knocked out the Bob before it could deal the damage, but he would have gotten three in on, on that well, play. I mean, so, so if, if he weirdings himself, he could weirding himself and not control. attack. He also yeah. paid one too many for weirding. Not that that matters. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's also true. A wasted <laughs> red mana. <laughs> An empty hand, however. Does not care about that. Uh, how, yeah. how fortunate there's no mana burn. Not, not that uh, that extra life is looking too precious for Max at this moment. He's sitting on a plush 22 life against so, Kenny's mere 5. Kenny takes another damage sacking a fetch land. But he now I has I, a non-pain source he, for uh, green mana. He does. That's pretty big. I mean, I think I still... I think I actually like weirding... I like Max weirding himself, sacking War Marshal and passing there. I think it puts him at drawing any goblin. Put him in good shape. Yeah, oh, that was a really <laughs> bad card to draw. All right, so yeah, Aether Vial, a little late for, uh, for Aether Vial for Max. It could Goth potentially do something, but... Uh, Explosive at the start of the game, but yeah. it's, it's only going to... Once it gets up to two or three where he's going to be able to throw something in at the end of turn, all it's going to do is make Kenny think a little bit more, but not really frightening at this point in the game. Yeah, I mean, we're still in a position where... Siege Gang or Ringleader into Siege Gang or Matron into Siege Gang. Uh, Max has a lot of, uh, you know, easy paths to victory, and he's at a lot of life and has also a lot of blockers. <laughs> um, yeah. Once again, Kenny's so, just in no position to start taking this game back over. He's just fighting to make sure that he makes it to the next turn. Yeah, and I'm looking at Kenny's list, and that's certainly a problem for him. I think the only card he really has to break through is Elspeth Knight Errant, which could give his guys angelic blessings so he can fly over if he establishes a board position later on. But even then, he's got to get to the point where he can establish a board position first. And speaking of the board, uh, the game sits might have gotten a little complicated if you just started watching. Uh, so we're in round eight of the Star City Games Open Series here in Edison, New Jersey. I'm here with Gavin Ver. I'm Gavin Verhey, joined by Jerry Silva, event manager, and Ben Hayes, guest commentator. And the board state has gotten a little muddy. What Max Teets has in play right now is uh, Goblin War Chief, an Aether Vial, three Goblin Tokens, and a Goblin War Marshal. And Kenny Mayer has two Tarmogoyfs, another Reliquary, and a Sensei's Divining Top. One of his lands is a Horizon Canopy, which he might cash in for a card at some point. He also has a Wasteland. He could potentially strip mine uh, max of a land if he so desired. So Kenny decides to take the aggressive stance and uh, serves in with that Tarmogoy. Looks like Max is going to take it. Um, How big is this Tarmogoy? And they're counting. There's certainly lands and creatures and sorceries. So that's at least three. Is there an artifact? Uh, it's unclear what Max discarded earlier. Oh, wow. Max. 5-5. Five, 5-5, five. Five, five, or 5-6, I suppose. Yep. Five, there's six. the Elspeth. And uh, there's wow, the Elspeth there we go. That, that Kenny needed. So Elspeth comes down and uh, will make some tokens to block and then threatens to jump his guys into the air, which will shortly start uh, halving, halving uh, Max Teets' life total. Uh, I mean, it jumps... Kenny does take the point. Yeah, and so... Drops the four. And I am... Oh, uh, that's why. He needed the second white on that. 
Uh, I suppose he has to legally cast his spells. Yes, yeah. It, it is an inconvenience <laughs> at times. But uh, Max may be running out of time to get that next goblin and push through. Yeah, with, with Kenny only at four, it's, uh, I mean, certainly any major goblin will do it. A matron or a ringleader will both uh, be big problems for Kenny, but Max has to draw one of those for that to happen. He drew something. Yeah. He drew Did something. he draw a matron? Uh, oh, drew... incinerator. And that's going to pick up another card. Yep. So another opportunity. Let's see what Max draws here. Slides it forward. It was, it's, I think it's red. It's a red card. Right, we've got, he's got a lot of those. I think it was a matron? I also I only think. saw it for a second. It, it looked like it was an old card chief. frame. Yeah, it, it was definitely old card frame. Yeah, so potentially war chief. Matron, war chief. Could be a pile driver. You've got to be thinking that Kenny's plan here is he's hoping to find the vindicate for the. Oh, we can't see what it is. I think actually. it's another oh, incinerator. Oh, uh, no, matron. Matron. Oh no, he's searching. Yeah. Yep. yep. So this Bad. Max can't get. Siege Gang because Kenny can wasteland him. I I think Kenny is Kenny can actually double wasteland him. But is Kenny dead this turn if Max gets a one drop and vials in him? He only has two blockers and yeah there are would be five attackers on Max's side. So one, two wait one four five six seven. Is he dead without it? One two. Three, he's in fact four, five, looks like six. he's dead on the yeah, board. Yeah he's dead without yeah. anything. Yeah, I mean I think I think Max is probably going to play around potential play around swords. Yeah. Well, he only has a Bayou on tap. He has tap. black green. And yeah, he can uh, sack it with knight and get a white sword. Oh sure. That's so I do think Max's play is to get a lackey and vial it in. He's counting. I think Max is, knight is checking how big the knight is and possibly going after an incinerator. If he's going after no, he's getting lackey. Yeah, no, he's, he's just gonna lackey. file in lackey and attack. And I can't think of any card Kenny could have. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking through Kenny's deck list right now. Unless he has swords, which is he could gain a bunch of life oh, off his own, his own knight. But that still sounds kind of rough for him. And I don't think he has swords, which he would have cast already. And Kenny looks at the board. <laughs> I think they're confirming that he's attacking him and not Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kenny's thinking about his blocks. So it looks like Kenny may have something to do here. Yeah, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be going through these motions if he wasn't going to do something. Uh, blocking here and swordsing his own goif, possibly instead of his own knight. Yeah. The knight, the knight might be too important. All right, so uh, the knight I think is a faster clock. If you're jumping it, but does he really have the option to jump it? I. Mean, I I think what he's going to have to do here is he's going to have blocking the war chief with the knight indicates to me that he's going to be he's got to swords his own Tarmogoyf, the one that was tapped that isn't blocking because you've got to get that war chief out of there. Yeah. So you've got to block it with something that's going to kill it. And so it, since he put the knight in front of the the war chief rather than the Tarmogoyf in front of the war chief, he's got to be sticking around. Right. So if he's going to sword something, it's going to have to be his own Tarmogoyf, gain himself some life there that way but leave both the blockers in play to kill the guys. Yeah, I agree. I think you have to trade, or have to not trade, but kill off his creatures here. Otherwise, like, you just, like killing the warchief is huge because then his creatures don't have haste, and it's, you have to minimize the number of creatures he has so you can try and get So he the just round. threw a, uh, a marsh flats through to get his knight a little oh. bit bigger. Okay. Actually, I think Max might be dead on the swing back. If really? Kenny sacks his Horizon Canopy and then wastelands his dual land, that would up the knight by three. Yeah, I think Max is dead exactly on the swing back. Well, let's if the see. Goyf is five. Oh, so, oh, he's topping. Oh, and after all oh. that. Oh, never mind. After all of that, <laughs> he doesn't have the swords to yeah. pull it out. Yeah, he had, he had to go through the motion so we could at least top to try and find it. But uh, I actually think by destroying his own lands, the knight. The knight plus the goif plus the blessing would have killed Max in one hit. I, I, he did have quite a few lands in his graveyard. I think that might have yeah, done he it. Didn't waste his own land, sack his canopy. Yeah, that would have been nuts. Yeah. He, uh, and he got the fetch. Oh, he got the fetch to shuffle again. Yeah. Yeah, he was just one turn off. So looking at the sideboard here, we look at Kenny's sideboard. What's coming in? Four engineered plagues in the sideboard. That sounds a lot like <laughs> yeah, that's coming very good. <laughs> um, four go for the throws. You think you want those in this matchup, probably? How good are point removal spells against goblins? I you mean, gotta get rid of Warchief. I, it's it's not yeah. all about one card. I think he but has that to bring one them card in. is is just 
it changes the game significantly. If you're worrying about what's in his hand rather than just what's on the board, that's a lot more to think about, and it makes you have to be a lot more defensive in this matchup. I mean, I think he's taking out Thoughtseize. I, th I thought, uh, or he may leave them in. I feel like Vindicate oh, probably, because yeah, Vindicate. Vindicate is super okay. slow here. Like, so he's pulling the Vindicate. Definitely pulling the four Vindicates, and uh, I think he wants to bring an eight. Is he cards. taking out the Confidants? I like Confidant in this matchup because all you want to do, I think, is draw yourself closer to Engineered Plague, and especially on the play, the Confidants are going to give you the opportunity to do that. Is he taking out? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I could see thoughts he's going here, but I feel like yeah. maybe nabbing it. Like, he's got four thoughts, he's one Inquisition. He might go down to maybe two or three discard spells. I don't know if you want to open a hand that has, like, you know, three discard spells against goblins. He probably cuts some discard spells. I agree with you. He probably cuts Vindicate. Uh, and then, I mean, I, I can see Shaving and Elspeth. Um, it's good. Actually, two might be... He might need to draw one to actually close the game out before Max can get, like, a Chieftain and... Although, I mean, he has swords and go for the throat post board, so Chieftain, it doesn't even really save him. He doesn't have a Chieftain. He's got one Chieftain in the deck. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, what? Yeah, I mean, looking over uh, Kenny's deck list, my first reaction was, well, some hymns, was well, he even though they were good. Was that he has to keep the Elspeths in so that he can get through the huge amount of blockers, but the game changes so radically after sideboarding. Those engineered plagues are what the game becomes about. When you land one, Suddenly, all the blockers aren't a problem. There are none, so you can just crash in. Uh, so this Elspeths might not be as important after sideboarding. You could maybe swap those for go for the throws. And they're expensive. See. Like he doesn't want to draw a hand with Elspeths and and like knights and. Well, Thoughtseize can definitely be a good lead just to break up your opponent's plan in this matchup. How important? Yeah, to get a war chief out, out of two, his hand. Yeah. Is that two life? I mean. Plus, actually, thought, yeah, Thoughtseize might be really uh, good Yeah, here. actually, and on the play for Kenny, hitting Goblin Lackey on the play is gigantic, too. So, yeah. I mean, on the draw might be a little worse, but on the play it's pretty good. Looking at uh, Max Tietz's deck list, looking through his options, Mind Break Trap, definitely not coming in. Our Relic of Progenitus, I could see it if you wanted to get rid of, like, make Shrink Tarmogoyfs and Knights, but it seems like a reactive card is probably not what the Goblin's player wants in this matchup. I think the question on the Relic is whether there's something he wants out for this matchup, right. rather than whether then it's something that he wants in. It's definitely a card that can give him something in this matchup, and it draws a card, it replaces itself, but I don't think there's enough for it to want to get into this matchup, but if there's something he doesn't want to be seeing in his opening hand, that definitely could come in just as a, a utility cycling card. Yeah, I mean, I mean, looking at a Max's deck list, it's, you know, there's so many strong spells in here, I don't know what aggressive card he would really want to take out for the Relic, so I, they'll probably stay on the bench, I imagine. I wonder if he's going to bring in the Thoughtseize to try to nab Engineered Plague. That would make sense to me. He's not too worried about his life total. If he's losing the game, he's <laughs> losing it big. Right. And plus, yeah. Thoughtseize still hits like a ton of good cards. And I have the Relic Query. Um, you know, just even hitting like a top could be huge. Um, I think Max brings in Thoughtseize. I don't think he brings in Pyrokinesis. I don't think it's going to do enough. It's just... Pyrokinesis can only hit creatures, right? It can't split among players? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, let's uh, have a gatherer right here. And uh, we'll find out real fast. Um, so Pyrokinesis, for those who don't know, is the red Force of Will. It's a red pit spell. You can exile a red card in your hand to cast it for free. And yeah, it deals four damage divided any way you choose among any number of target creatures. And it's an instant. Yeah, so it's... Probably, I don't see it killing more yeah. than I don't just think. Yeah, I don't see it being good. As soon as Knight's active, I think there's just no chance. Yeah, it's not gonna kill. It's not even probably gonna kill a Goyf and a Bob. Yeah. So I think the thoughts is to come in, and after that, uh, probably not too much. So the players look like they picked up their opening hands here, and we'll see how correct we are, are with their sideboarding calls. Kenny leads on a wasteland, which indicates to me that uh, he wants to uh, potentially wasteland Max's first play. For uh, those who don't know him, Kenny is a, a pretty. He's been playing Magic for a long time in the, the in the like the Northeast area. Goes to a lot of the Star City Games PTQs. Did he just won a PTQ, correct? I believe so, Jared. Yeah, yeah he won uh, the Nagoya PTQ, I believe, with a Naya deck. And uh, he's very experienced. Played on a lot of Pro Tours. He's a very skilled player. But his opponent is no slouch, slouch either. Max Teets made top eight of the Legacy Grand Prix, I believe. Uh, the one that uh, Steve Sadin won. 
uh, and he's played goblins in the top eight of the open series last weekend, and clearly knows how to play. And Looks there's like the, the relics relic. came in. The relics came in. I guess uh, shrinking all your opponents, goifs and knights, is a good enough reason to bring them in. Plus cycling is always a. Uh, Towards your best cards is always reasonable. Most interesting question I think there is what is no longer in the deck. I agree. Yeah, Max may think that, you know, if it comes down to Plague and if he assumes Kenny is taking out Elspeth, then uh, Relic can really buy him a ton of time, you know, shrinking Goyf and Knight if those are Kenny's only ways to win. How important do you feel Goblin Sharpshooter is in this matchup? Do you think uh, you're going to be able to machine gun that, them out a lot of the time or should it uh, be cut potentially? Uh, does he have a sack outlet like old goblins used to? It doesn't look like it. No. Um, he probably boards it out then. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. Looks like he boarded out, look, he, looks like he would board out sharpshooter, um, yeah, I don't know what else really. Right, so, is it, does incinerator have enough pop to take things down? To take out, like I was thinking the creatures are probably kind of big, but then if he's bringing in relic, he might want Incinerator, and Bob is pretty good in the matchup to get Ke to draw Kenny into more. Speaking of Bob, more yeah. spells. So uh, and here it is. So. so so back to the board. Max hasn't done a whole lot for a Goblin's deck. All he's done is cast that relic so far. On the flip side, Kenny hasn't done a lot either, but he played a Dark Confidant, which is no doubt going to be a strong play here. Definitely a precursor to doing some more stuff. Yes, and like we said, all Kenny wants to do here is find that Engineering Plague. And Dark Confident will help him do exactly that. He's perfectly happy taking three damage to uh, find a play here. And uh, Max thinks for a while on the end step and then just opts to draw. And it's worth noting that Max has no outs to two engineered plagues being in play. And his, his only real out to one engineered plague is a singleton goblin chieftain, which, if Kenny brought in Go for the Throats, it is going to be very difficult to stick. Yeah, with go, between Go for the Throat and Swords. That seems really tough. Yeah. Um, Max drops the Max, Badlands. Max so did bring can, in Thoughtseize. Yeah. So and you can get that in. I don't think that Badlands is long for the world, though. <laughs> wow, that's a really... Oh, wait. Does he have green mana? Um, yeah, is that a Savannah? He uh, couldn't have... Oh, that's a, that's an untapped Savannah under the logo. I see. So, uh, so Kenny reveals a hand of Caracas... Uh, go for the throat, sure. swords, the plowshares, Tarmogoyf, and engineer explosives. So it looks like Kenny brought the explosives in. Uh, so if he brought in go for the throat and obviously brought in plague and he brought in engineer explosives, he probably took out quite a few cards. You've got to think that the explosives is primarily against the tokens. Yeah, that makes total sense to me. And plus, you can just set it on, you know, uh, one early, like, a, you can go turn one explosives on one and then kill a goblin lackey if your opponent has it. So it gives you a little bit of play there. Yeah. It definitely is ver a versatile way to deal with stuff, but definitely most effective Max, against the board like Max had last game. And Max took explosives. Yep. Uh, so. I think he might be worried about that relic potentially. I don't know. So he flips Elspeth. Kenny takes four damage there. But that Elspeth is going to come down and uh, start making some tokens. Provided we have land number four. Uh, and and uh, Caracas is in uh, Kenny's yep. hand right now. So those are those two. Those are, are those both Badlands or Savannas? They've, uh, they've got to be Badlands against Dark Confidant, right? Yep. So he does not have a green source is what it looks like. And yeah, here comes Elspeth. There is Elspeth. But the soldier in passes. Um, not a super fast start by Kenny, but uh, Max's start is like glacial for a goblin deck. That's it's Max, exactly Max what Kenny has wants an incinerator. to see. He may have two incinerators. Not doing a whole lot without <laughs> yeah. their there's, friends. There's not very much incinerating happening when other goblins are not inside the party. We, we could potentially see a hard cast and incinerator just to get the uh, goblin count up. Uh, Max is still reluctant to crack that relic to draw card. He feels like, okay, I have it in my deck. I'm going to wait till the correct time to play it. And down and comes Warchief. Warchief. Here we go. And uh, Max is during his next line of play. Now the, uh, Thinking Warchief about whether to attack Elspeth or Kenny, it looks like. And it looks like it's Kenny, and Kenny takes two, dropping him to 13 points of life. And the Dark Confidant, like, if it's, it's been doing good work so far, but hit Elspeth last turn, hit some more high casting cost cards, here's Tarmer Boy, dropping Kenny to 12, and Kenny still has no green source. 
Kenny's got to be looking for a top that to start controlling like that damage. Source. Yeah, he, he needs a top or something. It's potential that that Dark Confidant uh, could die, but even then, he needs a green source to get something back online to start blocking. Max can't just have nothing forever. You'll note in the background of that shot, John Finkel in the top eight of the draft open. Oh, over right at there. one of the feature match tables, right over Kenny's right shoulder. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll uh, be able to move over to that match if this match finishes early. It'd be great to, uh, it's awesome he came out this weekend, absolutely fantastic. Having seen some of John's deck, I think it's likely we'll have opportunities to see him in the top <laughs> four and possibly the finals. Fair enough, and considering the player too, that seems like a good chance. I don't think pilot error is gonna be his exit strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kenny Mayer, uh, finds a Marsh Lats, which would get him the source that he needs to cast his green spells. So here comes Tarma Whip down, I would imagine. And Max is at very low life, uh, especially with uh, an Elspeth there. Uh, Meisenhauer just came by to inform us that uh, he just won his last round, which means he will almost certainly be in top eight of this event, making back-to-back -back top eights for him. Congratulations, assuming that uh, his next round opponent will choose to draw with him. Uh, Kenny uh, brings out that Tarmogoyf and puts out a blocker for Max. Yeah, those Elspeths just seem great here. The three damage and flying over and the potential goblins that might be in the way are excellent. Kenny tapping two more and go yeah. for the throat. Uh, and yeah, wasteland. the Wasteland gets to knock out a bat. Oh, man. Whatever Max has been saving, he needs to show it now. <laughs> and so he relics Kenny. Get those out of there. Keep that Tarmogoyf at a reasonable size. Right. You can definitely shrink the Tarmogoyf next time when it tries to attack. Uh, he drew another relic here. It looks like his hand is double incinerator, relic, and I can't quite make out the other two cards. Seems like he's in a pretty tough spot at the moment. Yeah. I mean, two more shots from Elspeth Pumps. And yeah, he really needed that. Um, Especially after sacrificing the fetch land. Yeah, he really needed that war chief to stick around so that he could start incinerating for value, but he seems pretty reluctant to just pay two mana and draw a card with a card as good as Goblin Incinerator. Well, the other big thing there is that he just has no no threat without the uh, without the war chief. Right. Yeah, I mean he's anything not doing much that he's anything. doing, unless he's dropping another war chief or a chieftain, it's just coming down and then sitting there waiting to be flown over. Uh, Max finally decides to crack that Relic of Progenitus, finds a mountain off of it, bringing him up to an extra land this turn, and uh, here comes down another Relic. Not too worried about losing <laughs> the first one, I see. A nice little 0-1 uh, Tarmogoyf on the other side. Go for the throat flips the Bob, so Kenny has another card that he can use to kill any threat Max plays. And uh, I would guess Elspeth is probably going to jump something here. Get in for a five, six you gotta points think of damage. Max goes down to two. Yep. Or with that Marsh Flats, I guess he can uh, activate Relic Progenitus in response. So Tarmogoyf is likely just hanging back on defense here. It's not going to be doing a lot. No reason it wouldn't be lethal anyways. Right, exactly. And at nine life, if he did drop a Chieftain or a War Chief to get in, doesn't make any sense for Kenny to open himself up to Bob doing bad things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it still gives him a, uh, a blocker within the Tarmogoyf, of Goyf, plus he keeps go for the throat in his hand, which should be able to seal off any route so I Max think, has the victory. I think um, if he's, he's going to go for Max sacking Relic to shrink it, and then he's going to sack Marsh Flats to give it back a power. But currently, Tarmac Wife is zero power. Oh, it's zero power right now. Yeah, zero oh, power right now. He's going to push it and then. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure I like that attack with Tarmac Wife then. Because it feels like Max is pretty desperate, so he's going to want to cycle that relic anyway. Yeah. Um, and granted, he can just scrabble him here and get rid of that card and then crack it end step, but. Scrabbling claws. <laughs> uh, an, an homage <laughs> to the, uh, the original Relic of Progenitus. Much worse. Going back to original Meriden. <laughs> the first time there, none of this Frexian nonsense. <laughs> All right. So uh, Kenny thinking. Another Tarmogoyf. Let's see if we can close this out. All right. Here comes Tarmogoyf. 
And uh, things are looking good for Kenny here. Max and cycles an incinerator, I think. It just keeps that should the bring out. the hand out. Yep. All right. And there we go. All right. Let's move to game three. All right, game three it is. Goblins on the play, always dangerous. So now we're going to game three, and we saw some of Kenny's sideboard decisions that game. We did not see Thoughtseize. We did see go for the throat, engineer explosives, and while we did not see it, engineer plague is, is, uh, plague is in his deck. Do you think he changes any of his sideboarding? If he kept it in Thoughtseize, I don't think he wants him as much on the draw. I th uh, I'm not sure. I think they almost had to come out because we did see engineered explosives and go for the throat, and Vindicates wanted to come out. Uh, but I think that after that, Thoughtseize is the logical choice, just because of the life loss. And uh, if you're if you're bringing in the go for the throats, the engineered plagues, your plan is not to stall, is not to just try and pull one card. You're trying to obviate their entire deck with those engineered plagues. So I think you you want to just go for uh, aggressively going after them. With the, he kept the dark confidants in uh, all the cards that we were talking about. Um, it's it seems like. Dark Confidant still in, uh, and he definitely brought in a pretty sizable sideboard plan, so Thoughtseize almost has to be out of it. Yeah, I'd imagine so. I mean, I don't think he would bring in any Engineer Explosives before he brought in Go for the Throats. So that means that, that that's at least nine cards in Kenny's deck. And this time it's not Kenny we should go into the sideboard that we should be talking about. It's actually Max. Max is a, thumbing through his deck, considering his options, trying to figure out how he should sideboard in for this matchup. Does he want Thoughtseize here? Or, like, the Relics were not that great from that game. Yeah, they shrunk the Tarmogoyfs, but he had no action in the first place. Well, so. he also had some pretty dead incinerators, and he may have figured that out and decided that those need to be out. Uh, they didn't have enough gas to get there. E even with the uh, with the Relics shrinking the Tarmogoyfs down, he never got to to take out a Tarmogoy. Yeah, and I could see maybe leaving some of the incinerators in, but I don't know if you can afford to have a heavy incinerator draw here. Uh, well, what? I don't know, go ahead. Sorry. You clearly don't want to be running them out there. If they're yeah. not cycling, they're not doing yeah. anything the, for the, you. The two ones for a three, not quite as impressive. Uh, what do you think, Ben? Um, well, he had Thoughtseize and Relic that game. Uh, Relic wasn't very good for him. I think that his configuration this game he might leave Relic in the board and bring in and keep the Thoughtseize in and the cards from his main deck that might come out for Thoughtseize. I could see taking out the Sharpshooter and maybe two Incinerators. Uh, he might even go down to one Incinerator. I think it's really good to have one to Matron for, but I don't think he wants many more than that. And we saw two in his hand last, ga last game, so I mean, either he left two in that game or he left four in. Uh, I think it's safe fairly safe to assume he boarded some amount of incinerators out, and he may have boarded the relics back out. Um, yeah, I don't really like relic. Well, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's tough, because if he, if Go Goif can never attack, because if it has, if it ever gets one damage on it, uh, he can sack relic, and then as soon as the graveyards are gone, the Goif will die. There's no way to so, respond to that and keep it alive. I'm just wondering if there are three more cards Max really feels like he can afford to take out. He could take a, a third Incinerator and just have one for Matron. Do you think the Warren Weirdings should be staying in in this matchup? Um, I mean, if you're boarding in Relic to kill threats, then I feel like you would rather have Warren Weirding, which just guarantee kills, guarantees killing a threat. All the Relic cycles, uh, Warren Weirdings and Goblin. Um, you... It may be the same situation where you might cut one, and keep so you one can in matron for, matron. for one. Yep. Um, not sure. Although, yeah, I could see cutting one Warren Weirding. Um, he may have cut. No, I don't think. I don't really think he would cut anything else. All so right, well, Max, game three. Max clearly kept that as uh, relics in. He dropped one on the first turn. It's possible that uh, Max might have felt like he didn't see uh, Engineered Plague that game. And Kenny kept a seven, so he might have felt, well, maybe I don't need the thought seasons anymore, which could end up backfiring on Max Teets. Well, that's an interesting turn <laughs> one from Kenny. No the land. Mox diamond <laughs> dropping down, pitching apparently his only land, because uh, he does not make a land drop. He has to have Engineered Plague in his hand. I haven't seen Kenny's hand, but I don't know why he would keep a hand like that without Engineered Plague. He does have top, so he can start looking for that. And yep. if all he's got to do is get the three mana and he gets to shut it down. Oh, oh wow, no plague. No oh, plague. That seems like a really... Wow. 
Uh, I don't like that hand. Swords, Goyf, Goyf, Knight of the Reliquary, Dark Confidant. That sounds a lot like a I thought I had one more land hand. <laughs> that sounds like, yeah, an I misclicked in real life. I forgot Mox Diamond made me discard a land kind of thing. Uh, I mean, now Kenny, if he still draws a couple lands, you can get out of this. Since his Divine Cop is obviously going to help oh, him absolutely. a little bit. But uh, that, that's a rough place to be in. Especially because if he had play, I could I think I could see it. But uh, with that hand, I don't know. But I, obviously, Kenny's played the deck quite a bit. He's got experience with it. I'll trust his judgment here. I How see heavy a diamond is he on, on the top of his deck. Uh, 4, 8, 11, 14, 18, 20, 23 lands in Kenny's deck. Yeah. Kenny got a planes. All right. And I saw a diamond on top of his deck. I didn't see what the third card was. Well, uh, the top will help him dig a little deeper this turn. Diamond's not going to help you. Oh, wow. Max just passes with nothing. Wow. And Max oh. kept another hand with just nothing but reactive cards, and Relic and Thoughtseize. He, he chose not even to to not even cycle the Relic to try to hit a one drop or a land or... He's really protective of those Relics. All I right. think he feels keeping Kenny's graveyard down is worth not being aggressive. Right. So uh, Kenny plays Tarmogoyf. I don't know how I feel about that play, only because it encourages Max to uh, crack the Relic, which is something I, I don't think Kenny wants Max to do here. But uh, I, I guess putting pressure on him is reasonable. So Max draws Aether Vial, okay. um, and I think he can Relic himself to make Tarmogoyf irrelevant. Yes, for now anyway. Yep, he doesn't need to crack it yet. Kenny uh, opted to play that Tarmogoyf over Dark Confidant, so I feel like he's probably on the beatdown plan here. He's, normally I'd be like, oh, well, maybe he wants to draw more cards, you know, get back into having, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, get some more lands, but with... Uh, that Tarmogoyf, it sounded like maybe he was trying to get Max to use his Relic in a different way or potentially uh, go on some kind of aggressive strategy. But now Dark Confidant hits the table. And uh, yeah, Max has a very lands. large grip. Um, yeah. I think I see a Warren Weirding. Or Is that two lackeys? I see a Warren Weirding. There's a Pile Driver. Okay. I do believe he has a lackey. Although I don't know why he wouldn't have cast it last turn. Maybe he's got some weird anti-engineering plague strategy, but I'm not sure what that could be. So uh, Kenny's thinking about if he's going to top here, or if he's just going to take whatever Bob throws at him. I, he knows he knows what the third card of his library is, right? What the top card is now. Um, yeah, I think the top card is a Mox Diamond. Right. So he can yep, take yeah. nothing. And then draw a card. It's like I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Good old top. And uh, Kenny was pretty interested in trying to get that third land so he could play a three drop. He does have Knight in his hand. So here comes another okay. box diamond. chooses to... Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, Max doesn't have anything that can kill the diamonds. Right. So Is that a... That's, wow, that's an, an engineered, engineered explosive, explosive which is going to make some Kenny's going to use his top. He's going to... And... That's a that's a whole bunch of wow, important Max, one cost yeah. and Max artifacts going away to, from Max's side. Yeah, I mean, so A rel goes away and Max can't activate it. B the vial goes away and since vial was on one, Max can't afford to activate vial in response, or he loses whatever he vials in. So that was actually a pretty great play by Kenny, killing that vial and really stopping Matt, Max Teats from uh, setting like up. Looks like Max drew a matron. Uh, I saw Warren Weirding in his hand as well. So Kenny uh, played another land there, and he's slowly starting to grind his way up from uh, the one land that he started with. And with that Dark Confidant active, it's, and in such a good position, it's only a matter of time until Engineered Play comes down for him. Goblins does not want to be the deck that's on the defensive. If you are not sending creatures out every turn, it's just not helping you at all. Especially when your opponent has inevitability. I mean, Kenny just has an inevitability that eventually he'll draw a plague and Max is not being aggressive enough to put any pressure on Kenny to limit the number of turns he's going to get access to. Although, we haven't seen it yet. <laughs> it's true, it could be oh, so yet. He does, there's Incinerator okay, doing Palm something. takes out Dark Confidant, so that'll buy Max some time. Still no land for Max there. Looks like a black card. I, I thought I saw a black card too. That could be a go for the throat. It didn't look like Plague to me. Yeah, I also did not get the feeling it was injured in Plague. I don't think Plague would have stayed in his hand this time. <laughs> uh, it's true. I mean, he might have tried for the swing first, but I don't think it changes much. All right, so in comes Charmagoy. And 
Elspeth. Oh, wow. Post combat. Making a token. All right. And uh, Kenny passes back to Max. Who's still stuck still on no land. And I see, is that two lackeys in his hand? Or three? There must be something else. Is there, is there three? I, mean, I feel I, like those lackeys would have been in play. Yeah, I don't know. There's just no around. reason not to have those down on the ground right now. Yeah, I agree. Unless, there's, oh, oh, there's one. Okay. All right. Interesting. So, uh, you've he, got to, you've got to think if he had more than one, he'd be putting him on the ground and forcing Kenny to stay back. Yep. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, Scissors of Iron Top comes down, which will definitely help Kenny out here. I think he sees. I thought I saw two lands. And a, is that a vindicate? Maybe he left Vindicate in. I think there's a sword there. Or perhaps that's a sword. If he has Vindicate, it just Vindicates Max's land. <laughs> what a blowout. Uh, so looking at Max's hand from this vantage point, I definitely see... War Chief. Yeah, I definitely a see a War Chief and a Mog War Marshal and a Matron and a Warm Weirding. So uh, Kenny cracks the top, cashes it in for a card, plays Vernon Catacombs, and out comes another top. Well, he did have the one he just threw back on top. Right. And that's great for Kenny, because now he can shuffle away the top with Verdant Catacombs, and he doesn't have to worry about drawing it anymore. Such is one of the many amazing features of the uh, fetch lands. And he comes in Tarmogoyf. And that slices Max's life down. I'm not sure exactly on what Tarmogoyf's power is, but I think Don't we'll find out I think here in it a got an Angelic Blessing. I think Elspeth hasn't been activated yet. Looks like it's on four... Kenny shuffling. Good old loading screens. Yep. So yeah, here we go. He corrects. Uh, he activates the Elspeth, puts a token onto the battlefield, and comes down another Tarmogoyf. That Relic of Progenitus that got blown up by engineer explosives is certainly looking pretty good in Max Teets' graveyard. And it looks like Max was right to try and protect that. Yeah. <clears throat> Would be very important right now. I just have visions of Relic, Crack It, Pyrokinesis, all your guys, <laughs> kill your Elspeth, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, I think there's a pretty low chance of that occurring. There's Lackey number two. Yeah. It's unclear why that didn't come down last time. Or rather, Pyrokinesis, all your guys, then Relic, the one that works. <laughs> uh, yeah, good call. You don't want the card in the graveyard. Yeah. Vulture uh, Goyf. Okay. Yeah, both of <laughs> both, both the 2-3 Goyf when instants are not in the graveyard, not, not a great play. So uh, Kenny's thinking about making sure he doesn't screw something up to lose this game, but uh, he seems it like he's seems in good like position. it's just time to go to town. Yep, the Tarmogoyf swing in, and Max has the opportunity to block. All right, so uh, we've got confirmation that the Tarmogoyfs are three power creatures, so three force. So he can't triple block and kill any of them. Uh, at best, he can, he can trade two of his creatures for two Tarmogoyfs, but I feel like that's kind of conceding. So yeah, he leaves the, the two lackeys back. I think his plan is hopefully kill a soldier token and then maybe lackey something in. And out, oh, wasteland on Badlands. That, that seems uh, is that a, not and very good. Oh, and, and, he, the, that's, and the that's the hand. hand. Yeah, there's the Kenny pretty handled to the game. So Kenny's deck seems to have a pretty not great Goblin matchup. Has four engineered plagues in the side were directed by it and just never draws them. It just doesn't need it. No. <laughs> yeah. Well done by Kenny. Uh, assuming he can draw the next round, that could be a another top eight for him. The uh, Star City Games kind of specialist in events goes to your PTQs uh, and at Rono he just come out on the circuit and yeah, uh, pretty cool deck he's playing too. It's a really interesting take on the archetype. It's like nothing too special, but at the same time nothing we've see like too often. There's a couple, a couple people playing this every tournament and it never seems to break through and yeah. Kenny might be the one who does it. He's really good at these kind of decks. The, the best part about this